Okay. So, welcome back. Um, How was your cedar? What was your Gebrach's item? Matzah dipped into everything on the table. Nice. I had guacamole, but then of course I had to dip it like into the wine. Guacamole well, doesn't count. Exactly. That's right. So we're holding chapter 120, Simon Kofav. So as you noticed, by Maire, on the second night of Pesach, we started doing a very special mitzvah. Anyone know what it is? No. That's right, the Eimer, that's right. We're counting the Eimer, Sphere the Eimer, the mitzvah of counting the Eimer. And it's interesting, anyone knows what comes after the month of Nisan? That's right. The month of Iyar. And the Rebbe points out that the month of Iyar has a very, very special... That's right, Ani Hashem um, Rifecha. The Rebbe points out, I guess now a few things, that number one, that Iyar is Rasha Tevis. Rasha Tevis is the... Each letter of the month, each letter of the way the month is spelled stands for some, something else. Er is Ani Hashem Reifecha, that I, Hashem, and your, I are your healer. So it's a, a special month for anybody who needs a before Shlema. Er is a very, very special time. And also, it's pointed out, the Rebbe points out that the month of Er is also very special because every single night, and or day of that month has a special mitzvah of Sphere Sa'ema every single day. So it's also a very, very special month because of that. So we're still missing, but uh, okay. So now we're holding the laws of Sphere Sa'ema. So to point out two things we're going to see inside. So number one is the actual dinim, the halachis, the laws of counting the Aimer, and also the time of Sphere Sa'ema is a time that has a few restrictions because of what happened. We'll see inside exactly what happened. We're in Neuheg, we have the custom to have mitzas avelos to follow some of the customs, some of the laws of mourning because of what happened during this time. So we'll see inside. Okay, so again, that's page 816 in the Lashna Kadesh, 817. In the English, Simon Kukhaf, chapter 120, the laws of the mitzvah counting and the laws pertaining to the actual days of Sphira. So, Aleph, the first halacha, number one. The second night of Pesach, right? So, you went to Shul on Pesach, you dive in Mairev, you said hello. You went home, you made your seder, you went back in the morning the next day to shul. You had chakras, you had musaf, you had your meal. Comes the next night, we added something in davening on the second night of Pesach, right? We begin to start counting the counting of the Eimer. So the actual count of the Seferin Me'umad, the count of the Eimer, it's brought down, it should be done when you're standing. This is the time to count the Eimer. So if somebody is not davening Mairev, or they are davening Mairev, they should do it as soon as it becomes nighttime, as soon as it becomes Tzai Anyone know what's Tesek Echavim? What time? Or what's... Yeah, that's right. It's actual nighttime, not just by Shkia Sechama, by sundown, when the sun starts to set, but when it's actually nighttime, that's when the mitzvah begins. And it's a special thing, it's a special mitzvah to do it. Mitzvah he, the proper way to do it, is to count as soon as it's nighttime. But the Yavid, if somebody missed, right at the beginning of the, the proper time, it's okay. Zmanna kol halayla. After the fact, if you missed the uh, best time, the mitzvah is 
is still extended to the entire night. So as long as it's still nighttime, we can still count. And we'll see what happens if you forgot to count by night. We'll see. <coughs> So the Vesa Knesses of El Shabbos of Yom Tov stay from Acher Kiddush. This is very interesting. So it's not our custom, but if anybody ever dabbles in an Ashul, which is Nusach Ashkenaz, an Ashkenazi Shul, which is not Chabad, you'll see they have a special custom, which goes back already to the times of the Rishonim, the Gemara, that is to make Kiddush in the actual Shul. Right, so right after Maidiv, you'll see that the, the Gabbai, the Chazan, whoever it is, somebody gets, somebody who's appointed, gets up and makes Kiddush for the entire congregation. So why is that? Because it used to be that the shul was a place where people that are visiting, they would have special rooms for guests. That, that's how it used to be. Today, people host people in their own homes, so on and so forth, but it used to be that the norm was that when you come to a new city and you don't have where to stay, the shul had a special place for you and they had the meal, the Shabbos meal also there. So the custom back in the day was, was Kiddush was made in the actual shul right after the evening. So all of those who are staying in the shul can fulfill the obligation of Kiddush and right away be able to wash and eat their meal. Obviously, Anybody here has ever seen such a thing in show? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, so you have the Ashkenazi show, but most people, if you dive in the Chaban house or any other Chaban show, you'll see that that's not our custom um, because today it's not a common thing. People do not usually stay in the show overnight. Rather, there are systems set up for people traveling that they can uh, stay by other people's homes. So therefore, we don't continue this custom that was brought down. However, some um, communities still keep to this custom. So for those communities, it's brought down over here. So what do they do first? First, they make Kiddush, and then they count Sefirah So if you, ever, if you ever find yourself in such a shul, you'll know that first they're going to make Kiddush, and then they will count Sfiris Ha'emer, and the reason which is brought down is in order to first bring in the holiness of the day, and then you can count Sfiris Ha'emer. Now, can anyone guess? How about on Mitzay Shabbos? What do you do first? You make a dollar, you count Sfiris Ha'emer. Sfiris Ha'emer. Oh, whoever said Sfiris Ha'emer, did you cheat? Huh? You had it this week. Very good. So, so if I didn't say spread Elmer before. And after? So, like, so why is the question like? Oh. Why is the question that exists? Oh, very good. So, the question. Good question. Very good question why the question exists. <laughs> we'll read it inside and we'll see. When we say Shabbos, we have a from Kedem Abdala, Kedem the Achim, it's here. There's a mitzvah of something called Tisafis Shabbos, of adding on to Shabbos. So you can do it um, before Shabbos. There's a custom some people take in Shabbos earlier. And there's also a mitzvah when Shabbos leaves to extend it as much as you could, right? There's the time when Shabbos ends. But if you extend it, it's also a good thing. It's a, it's a mitzvah of Tisafis Shabbos that you're adding on to the bare minimum. And you're allowed to, you're able to. It's a special mitzvah. To add on to to Shabbos now. Havdala, what do you do by when you make Havdala? Havdala means you're you're separating between Shabbos and you're entering now into the weekday. So what do we do? We want to push off as much as we could Havdala to in order to keep Shabbos here as long as we could. So therefore, first we count Sfir Sa'ima. So we you know, we push off by whatever, a few minutes, but we're still adding on to Shabbos because Abdullah is also going to be pushed off now. Now that we count in Sfirah Sa'imer, it adds a few more minutes, or if somebody says it's much more Kavana, it's a, 
a very good thing. You add whatever time it is to Shabbos. So you'll count, you can write it, you, could, you have two options. You can either make Havdalah now, but if you make Havdalah now, it means that's it. It's not Shabbos anymore. Or you can push off Havdalah, count Sfer Sa'imer, and then by doing so, you added a few more minutes to Shabbos. So that's the reason. Now, again, if somebody didn't, no problem, you count right after. The, the mitzvah goes for the entire night. Like also, like, like if the count before um, Abdullah, it's still pretty good day, no? Oh, very good. Oh, this is a huge discussion. Um, this Kedusha Sayyam, like the Ikra this is a very, very big discussion, and it plays itself out in many areas of halacha. Um, Somebody David might have early, but they forgot to put on film. They still put on film. It's still day outside, but they David might have. So for them, it's already nighttime. So uh, by writing a get, if somebody David might have early, there's a halacha that you're not allowed to write a get by night. Can you write the get now? So outside, it's still day, but you already David might have. There's many, many halachas that uh, this is a very good question. And the answer in short is there's a difference between the actual day itself and the addition to the day. And even in that, there's different opinions. <laughs> so it's. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so yeah, so it's a, it's a good question. So you're right. Meaning if you're counting the next day, it's already the next day. You're counting the sphere of the next day, but it doesn't uh, create, it doesn't pose a stira, it doesn't pose a contradiction to taste with Shabbos. Meaning the mitzvah of adding on to Shabbos is a separate thing because the, adding on to Shabbos actually extends into the next day by definition. So it's a big topic. That's a very, very good question. <laughs> no, it, it, it is, it is. It's, uh, it's, there's hundreds of pages written on this. When the last, when the last day of Yom Tov falls, on the Shabbos, and the same thing, and you have the last day of um, Yom Tov and Mitzay Shabbos, you also, we say Kiddush and Abdallah on, on one, uh, on one uh, what's it called, on uh, Shabbos ends, but it falls onto the, the day of Yom Tov, so you still can't swear to Emir beforehand. Okay, base. What happens if you forgot to count? Anyone know? You can still count. Oh. So very good. So Misha Shacha called Halayla Vilay Safar, somebody who forgot the entire night. They didn't count, right? They were learning. They got carried away in their learning or the Fabrangian, whatever it is, and they completely forgot to count. What do you do? Yisper Bayem Blay Bracha. So you count by day, the next day without a bracha. That's fine. Forgot. Don't push off the mitzvah. Still count by day without a blessing. Now, can you continue counting the next night with a bracha? I don't think you missed once. You missed the one. Oh, so if you missed... Exactly. So if you missed the night time, but you caught the mitzvah by day, then the next night you can still count with a bracha. So again, tonight, Right? Let's say you'd have a night of, you went to Fabrengen, you went to Sher, Chavrosa, whatever it is, and you know, you forgot to count Sfer Saimer. So what happens? Tomorrow morning you wake up, I didn't count. So what do you do? If you count tomorrow morning or any time by day, you can still count tomorrow night with a bracha. Yeah? So let's see it inside. So again, Misha Shacha Kol Alay Levlay Safar, somebody who forgot. The entire night, and they didn't count. So the next day, tomorrow morning, so tonight you forgot. You went to sleep. Tomorrow morning, you, you woke up, you remember. So what do you do? You count without a blessing. The next following 
nights, you're fine, you can count with a blessing. You count the mitzvah, you count the opportunity, you count it by day, and you can continue counting with a blessing for the future nights. Now, what happens if you forgot to count by day? What happens if you forgot to, to count the entire day? So you can still continue the mitzvah because every single night you still have the ability to count. However, it should be done without a blessing. Now, what happens if... So now we know if you for sure forgot, but you remembered by day. Or you forgot by night and you also forgot by day. What happens if somebody doesn't know? Oh, that's right. If somebody doesn't know, maybe I did count by night, maybe I didn't count by night. It's a, it's a suffix. A suffix means it's questionable. It could be I did, it could be I didn't. Even if you didn't count the next day, right? So let's say tonight you have in Mairev, you learned Chassidus, yeah, you, you reviewed what you learned by day, you went to 770, whatever it is. Now you're thinking to yourself, oh, count or I didn't count. You have a question, you don't know. Comes tomorrow morning, you said, you know what? I still don't know. And you kept thinking about it until it's already nighttime. So you have a suffix you don't know. And by day, you for sure didn't count again because you, it's a suffix you weren't sure. Maybe you counted, maybe you didn't count the night before. What's the halacha? You could still count the blessing the next, for the following nights. Yeah? Everyone's still counting the blessing? I yes. should ask. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so again, let's just uh, summarize this because you forgot by night. So what can you do? You can catch the mitzvah by day. Okay. If you count the mitzvah by day, you count without a blessing, and then you count going forward with a blessing. Okay, next scenario. You forgot by night, and you forgot by day. Can you still fulfill the mitzvah? Yes. yes. Do you make a blessing? No. No. Okay. Now, the third category, a suffix. Somebody doesn't know. Maybe I counted and maybe I didn't count. You can still count the blessing going forward. But not in the same day. No, yeah, you didn't. Not on the same day. The next, the following nights, you continue with the blessing. So if you have a question, I don't know, maybe I counted, maybe I didn't count. The next night, the halacha is, it says clearly over here, you continue and you're allowed to make a blessing on the count, on the sfira. Don't worry, before the end of the class, we'll review it and you'll know it better than most people. If you forgot to do, for example, yesterday, yeah. even though it's not today, not, not in night, not in day, you can still count. Oh, without a blessing. Yeah, tonight you count without a blessing. I'm going forward. Yeah. But if you don't count the night, whatever, whichever night you do, you can continue. Yeah, you can continue. It's still a mitzvah. Every night you do it is a special mitzvah. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Question. If you didn't, if you were not sure you counted, but it's still the day. Can you count? Without a blessing, yeah. Okay. That's right. If, you, if you're not sure if, you, if it's night. If it's night, so then you count ready for the next one. Without a, oh, so if you're not I mean, sure. If you're not sure if you count. Oh, oh, if, oh, very good question. What happens if it's the same night, you're already down in might have, but you don't know. Maybe I counted, maybe I didn't count. Count. Why are you so confused? What are you about That's right. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> A good question. So that's a good. Oh, so if it's the same night and you don't remember if you counted or not, what you do is you count without a blessing, right? So it's the same night tonight, right? You dive in my already. Then, as you're eating or snacking, whatever it is, did I count or I didn't count? So you count without a blessing. Yeah. Okay, don't worry, we'll, we'll review it. It's gonna it be tricky, but it's okay. Now, download the fourth halacha. 
before making the blessing, a person should know what they're making a blessing on. The high know. So what does that mean that you know what you're making a blessing on? You should know which day you're counting. So tonight we're going to be counting. It's fine. You can you can still say it because it's on the man. We'll see in a second. You're not allowed to. Yesterday was the ninth. That's right. So yesterday is the ninth. So we're going to be counting the next day tonight. It's still okay. You can say that it was going to be tenth because you're not counting. First of all, it didn't reach the time yet, and also not counting it. You're saying tomorrow is going to be the tenth. So before you make the blessing, that is one should know what they're making a blessing on. So you should know that in this and this day. So if you're down with a minion, you have no problem because you're going to hear it from the chazan. And once you hear it, so you already know what you're counting. So again, Dalit. If you don't know, if you made a blessing, you can still count. You don't have to make, you should make the blessing again. So it's a proper thing to do. Before you make the blessing, a person has to know on what they're making a blessing. The A person has to know how many days is the sphere for that night. If they did not know, if they did not know which uh, day they're counting, if a person did not know, they made the blessing and they didn't know what they're going to be counting. You know, they're relying on what they're going to hear from the person beside them. Gam kinyatza. It's also okay. You still fulfill the mitzvah. Also, another scenario. So one scenario is you made a blessing and you didn't really look inside the sitter to know which day it's going to be. You know, you know your friends right beside you. So whatever they're going to say, you'll know which one to, to catch up to. It's good. You don't uh, make another blessing. You're still fulfilled in the mitzvah. Another scenario, somebody had in mind, okay, today I'm counting day number four. But after you made the blessing, you remember that really tonight is day number five. You can still count the proper count and you do not make a second blessing. Yeah? Uh, what day, what day is today? Uh, it's okay, you count that day and that's it. No, but how, how do you need to do it? Oh, so, 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 oh. So if you say, if you already oh, said it. And then, oh, you think, you think, you think, you think. So, oh, so if you have somebody beside you, it's better not to speak. You just show them if they can tell you or show you which day it is. If you have no choice, you have to speak. So being that it's the same, you're not really making an interruption. It's still, you're speaking, but it's for the purpose of fulfilling the mitzvah. So you are allowed to, to ask them. But the best is, even before, to know which day to count beforehand. It's tough, huh? Don't worry, you, you'll, you'll master all these other things. Oh, Pesach. Okay, so now it's going to get easier. That's right, because if you don't, if you don't say that, then, uh, then you'll see, you'll see. Every year that you review, and every year that you do it, you'll see, you're going to know it on the back of your, you're going to know it as, as well as you know the one, two, threes. We'll see. In the beginning, processing any new information, it's overwhelming. This, that, wow, so many details, and you can get lost, because that's only the first time. But after you learn it the second time, okay, it's starting to, to sink in. And then the next year goes by, and the next year goes by, and then it becomes like a second nature. So it's okay, we'll see. So in the beginning, the, what do you think? When uh, processing the information is, is easier, you're overwhelmed. There's so many opinions, this and that. 
and uh, you're learning and you have to review them constantly. It's also hard. It's also overwhelming. You feel like you can't do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's so, so much to learn. The answer is the first time is hard. Yes, the answer is the first time is harder because it's hard to process new information, especially when there's a lot of details. And the next time you review it, oh, okay, I'm picking it up slowly. I don't get it. I still don't feel that I truly know it. So I do it again. Oh, once I do it again, then it slowly, slowly sinks in. There's a part, there's a saying from the Ragachava. The Ragachava was a very big Tamil Chafim. The Ragachava guy, that's what it was called. He there's a city in Poland, Russia, I don't know, Belarus, and he was the thereof. He was a tremendous, tremendous Tamchachim, a tremendous scholar. And he himself even said that I would consider my learning something the first time as a waste of time because I don't get anything. And we're talking about somebody over here who wrote the deepest, deepest, deepest parts of Torah. That the Rebbe quotes him all the time, and and but he said, but it's really not a waste of time. Why not? Because I couldn't get to the second time of learning without the first time. Rabbi Chaim Goyen is from the biggest, biggest, biggest Torah scholars that we had in, in, in the previous generation. And he himself even said on himself that he, he would consider the first time learning a loop as a waste of time because you don't understand anything if it wasn't for the fact that I can't get to the second time without the first time. So the first time you learn something, it's not a waste of time, even though you don't understand everything. Why not? Because the first time is there to help you get to the second time. That's the answer. So the first time you learn something, it's overwhelming. Wow, I cannot do this. This is crazy, right? It's crazy. Yeah. You want, you expect all these things from me? I, I can't, I, you know what I mean? I have a dispute in the Gemara, in the Mishnah. Then I have a dispute in the Gemara. Then I have a dispute in the Rishayin. I have to learn each opinion and this and that. It's overwhelming, right? The answer is the first time it's overwhelming. The second time, a third time, it gets better. Yeah, the same way. Um, in the show, when they come to Sarah Tana, it's uh, any they say bracha de Chada, and we say Amen. So we need to repeat after the bracha by ourselves. Yeah. Oh, yes, the answer is yeah. Our custom is, and then we make the bracha for ourselves, and you have in mind that you're not to. Uh, when the chazan counts, you're not being upset with the chazan, you're doing it for yourself also. Yeah. Rabbi, I'm obvious, but do you think in Adam, or no? In Halo? Yeah. yeah, same thing. Yeah. So, what did you say after the Halo? That's right, you say after the Halo, yeah. Yeah. V'chein in Tabas Svira, the same thing is if somebody said Hayyim, they started counting and they said 20 days to the Ayyim. Let's say, for example, right? Or we'll give a better example. For example, they really have to count six, but they said five. So, if you remembered right away, if you catch yourself right away, oh, I made a mistake. I said five, but really I'm supposed to say six. So, you count right away six and you don't make another blessing. But if you made an interruption between the blessing and the counting, it's you have to count again. So a little bit uh, yeah. a few seconds past, five seconds, seven seconds. Then you, yeah, you make another blessing. So now let's let's review the four laws that we learned inside, because there's a bunch of scenarios. And then if we have time, we'll go forward. So, Simon Chaf, chapter 120, Hilchas Firas Aimer, Vimehas Firas, the laws of counting the Aimer and the days of Svira. And you want to remember when does the mitzvah Firas Aimer start? Second day of 
second day or second night? No. Second night. Oh, you see? Day because they start at night. Oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> It's not Shana. Shana. It says Belel, the second night. Belel Shana shall pay Sach the second night. Um, and we learn a hekish, we learn a comparison between the two, that just like one of them, the mitzvah is standing up, so too over here, the mitzvah is standing up. If one counts on sitting down, what do you do? Nothing. After the fact, you don't have to do anything, you fulfill the mitzvah. But just like Hatchilo, the best thing to do properly is to start. Uh, when, when you do the mitzvah, it should be standing up, but if after the fact you did not do it standing up, you still fulfill the mitzvah. Now, when should one begin to count? When is the best time? That's right, as soon as it reaches, as soon as the actual light begins. So if it's shkia, if it's when the, the sun starts to set, that's still not the time. It actually has to be night time. So by night time, the mitzvah is to do it right away. What if I didn't do the mitzvah right away? How long do I have? To say the bracha until cold water. Oh, that's a good point. To say the bracha, you have the entire night. Mm -hmm. If you missed the mitzvah by night, you still can make it up by day. Mm -hmm. However, if you count by day, we'll see in a second, you do it without a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good question. So if you look over here in footnote number one, it says, since this is a mitzvah that is done only at a certain time, a specific time, so it says a woman are exempt from counting the aimer. Yeah, everyone sees that? The Magen of Ram says that women have since accepted this mitzvah as an obligation. The Mishnah Baruda brings a different custom, but the Magen of Ram says, there are sin mitzvahs that even though one is not obligated in them, but they accepted upon themselves that we're doing this mitzvah. That's a good question. So it's not the Kavala, it's brought down one way, but the custom is that uh, ladies do count, women do count, and when they count, you do perform a blessing. So it's a in more Sephardic circles, um, you'll see that not necessarily do they make blessings on each mitzvah that they do, but in Chabad, to the opinion that even if they, if they do a mitzvah that they're not obligated in, let's say Lulav and Asr, it's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah which is bound to time. So not all women are, women are not obligated in it, but most people still do it, right? So in other communities, they would in, in the Sephardic community specifically, they would not make a blessing, but by us, we accept the opinion that they do it and they do it with a blessing. So it's the same thing with Svirsa Eimer. So even though it's, um, strictly speaking, it's a mitzvah sanser shaz mangrom, it's a mitzvah which is bound to time. We're exempt. Nevertheless, the Magna Vram writes that it's it's as as if they It's not the one on the other. Often in Ashkenazi shul, a shul that still damages Nusach Ashkenaz, and it comes Friday night or it comes Yom Tov, and the custom is they make Kiddush first. 
What comes first? Kiddush or Sfer Saimer? Kiddush. Kiddush. First, you sanctify the day. Once you find the day, then you can't Sfer Saimer. Now, So you count first, or you count first, it separates between one day week. Now, what do you do if Matei Shabbos comes, right? Tonight, let's say, is Matei Shabbos. But tonight is also day two of, of Yom Tov, right? When Chutz let's say, right? Or it's day one of Yom Tov, doesn't really have to be in Chutz Laaretz. So, so tonight is not say Shabbos, let's say, right? So you have to make a double, but tonight is also the beginning of Yom Tov. What do you do first? Do you first make Kiddush? Or do you first make Kiddush? Do you first count Sfer Sa'imah? Or do you first make Kiddush? And just to point out, this Kiddush is special because you're going to make Kiddush and you're also going to make Havdalah, right? Yakna has. You, you, you remember doing it? It is a trick question. Uh -huh. You're in Kiddush and Abdallah in one thing because Abdallah is incorporated into Kiddush. The first days of Yom Tov. <laughs> one second. The first days of Yom Tov. The first night was Friday night, right? Pesach. This past, it's actually this Kvias. We had Friday night was Pesach and Shabbos two and one, right? So what do you, oh, oh, very good. Let's see. Oh, so let's see. Very good. So why is it a trick question? Because over here, we have two opposite slaughters. By Kiddush, what do we do? Kiddush, we make Kiddush first, and then we count. Why? Because we want to bring in Shabbos as soon as we could. Havdalah, we do the opposite. First, you count, and then you do Havdalah, because you want to extend Shabbos for as long as you could. The trick question here over is, when we say Shabbos falls, is going straight into Yom Tov. So when you make Kiddush, you also make Avdali of two and one. You still want Shabbos. It's all about Shabbos. So, oh, so let's see inside. Let's see inside. The Yom Tov the Shabbos. She'emrim Kiddush ve'Havdala on the same cup. You're going to make Kiddush, and you're also going to make Havdala. So what do you do first? Yasim Kiddush ve'Havdala kolis echad seif from Gamkin kaidem kdele acher es Havdala. So even though I have a reason to say maybe I should make Kiddush first, because what am I gaining by making Kiddush? I'm accepting I'm accepting the Yom Tov quicker. Nevertheless, the Allah. Shabbos, I'm trying to keep in before ushering in the next day, which is also Yom Tov. Okay, a few more minutes. Beis, the second halacha. Meaning, Shashach HaKal Halay Lavalei Safar. Somebody forgot the entire night and they did not count. Yisper Bayeim Balay Bracha. So what do you do? The next morning, you remembered, you count with Ada Bracha, that's right. In the following nights, what do you do? You can say it with a bracha. You can say it with a bracha, correct. Oh, what happens if you forgot also the entire day? You should still count, but you can't say a bracha. That's right. You still count. You still count. You still, count. You still fulfill the mitzvah. But you should do so without a blessing. You stop the play now as a third category. You don't know, you're so involved in the mimer that you were learning that you completely forgot what you did. Maybe you counted, maybe you didn't count. It's a sophic. I could say maybe yes, I can say maybe not. I have a memory that maybe I counted, but I'm not sure, maybe that memory was from yesterday, right? This happens to people. Yeah. It's common, right? So we must have a you have a sophic, you're not sure, maybe you counted, maybe you didn't count. 
even if you didn't go ahead and count the next day, so by night you don't know. By day you for sure didn't count. You can still count the following days or following nights with a blessing. Gimel. Wow, look at that. We actually skipped Gimel for some reason. That's why I went back. Look at that. Wow. Let's see, Ashkan Chapratis, we went back. Gimel, Hashem, Achavere, Ben Ashmasha, say, Achakach, somebody, when it hits the Shkia time, and you, Shkia is when the sun starts setting, and you start going into the time, which is halachically called Ben Ashmasha, or as they put it in English, twilight zone, the twilight time. Kama, Maidim, Hayem, so you ask your friend, how much are we counting today? Yemar, Loi, Esmel, Hayakach, Vakach. When you answer your friend, you have to say, not what we're counting tonight. You have to say, yesterday we counted this and this day. And then you'll know, oh, tonight we're counting the following number. Why? What's the problem? To say it, uh, just say the number. Oh, if you're going to say how much you counted, how much we're counting that night, and you're no longer able to make a blessing in the Sphira. What's the problem? Because if you heard it from somebody else, it's as if you yourself said it and you fulfill your mitzvah. So when you're going to count by yourself, by you actually saying it, you can't make a blessing because you're already, strictly speaking, already fulfilled the mitzvah. So you say without blessing. You say without a blessing, that's right. So the proper thing is, if you ask each other, hey, what are we counting tonight? You don't say tonight is this and this day. You can't you say yesterday we counted this this day, and you'll know tonight you're counting that day plus one. Because you just say the number or not? Yeah, you could actually just say the number because you're yes. not actually counting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you can say one. Yeah, but you can say tonight is oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. So. That's right, yeah. Okay, Vazrasham, we will continue tomorrow. <laughs> What am I, snack?